Hello, I'm Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of Cool Tricks and Hot Tips for Adobe Premiere Elements 14. This is a book of 50 special effects. We show you how to create using some of the basic tools in Premiere Elements. Now, this one also involves Photoshop Elements, so if you've got the bundle or you've got a similar graphics program, you can create this effect. This effect uh, is what we call our 3D photo effect. It's also known as the parallax effect. The basic idea is that we're going to take this photo and move its elements individually to make it appear that we'll be moving through 3D space. The principle of parallax is that things that are closer to you move faster than things that are farther away. So in other words, as you're walking down a sidewalk, things that you pass by near go by very quickly, while things way off in a distance may seem to move very little or at all towards you. So we could take this photo and I show you in the book how to do it. We can cut this picture into two, maybe even three layers, but I took a simpler approach and this is not really such a cheat, but it sometimes makes for a more effective effect. Uh, let's take a look at my PSD file here. Uh, what I've done is I've actually created a composite using elements from three different photos. So you can see I have, and if you look over here on the layers palette on the right, you can see I have my background and the background is of course those mountains way off in the distance. My middle ground is the village itself and I can move that around so you can see um, that this is uh, a layer in which I have cut part of it out so that my village here is floating, it's a separate layer. And then my foreground here, which is these uh, houses that are sort of in the foreground or closer to us. And I'm going to move these into Premiere Elements and animate them separately so that it looks like we are moving into the picture in three dimensions. Now, Premiere Elements can't separate layers in a PSD or a Photoshop file. So what I've done is I've created individual PSD files or Photoshop files for each of these layers. Here's my foreground layer. And as you know, that checkerboard in the background means that it's transparent over the rooftops of the houses that are in the foreground. My middle layer is of course the village itself. And you can see that behind it is transparency. And then our village background, which is just a whole separate photograph that I'm just going to use uh, the upper half of or the upper third of. So let's go into Premiere Elements. And here in Premiere Elements, my project assets, I have imported those three levels. And I'm going to place the background here on my video one track. And I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna extend it just a little bit. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna press the uh, backslash key right above the enter key on the keyboard. So it stretches out five seconds, probably a good length for this particular effect. Then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to grab my middle layer and place it directly above there on the timeline. Naturally, if I had extended or trimmed the duration of the background, I would also do that with the middle ground. And then finally, I would take the foreground and place it on video track three. So I've got these three uh, creating a composition. Now you notice all the photos are just a little bit large in addition to being out of place. They seem a little bit large. And if I were to click on, say, this foreground and move it around, you see it extends out beyond the edge of the picture or out beyond the edge of the video frame. I want that. I don't want too much. I don't want it to be massive. And I have ensured that each of these layers is no larger than 1000 by 750 pixels in size. I also, before I imported the photos into Premiere Elements, I went to my preferences. This will be under, under the preferences on the left on a Mac, on a PC, it's under the edit button. And in my preferences on the general page, I unchecked scale to frame size. There it is right there. If you have that checked, all of your photos are artificially resized to fit in a video frame. We don't want that. We want to have a little bit of room to work with these photos. So I'm going to take this foreground here and I'm just going to uh, resize it by grabbing on the corner handle, drag it down and place it in the lower part of my video frame. And then I'll stretch it out here so it's just about the width of the video frame. That's good. Now also my middle ground here, way too big. I could grab it by these corner handles. I can also manually resize it. And I'm going to do that by making sure that that clip is selected on my timeline and going over to Applied Effects, go to Motion, and just set the scale down to about 70%. 
There we go. Now my village fits in nicely and I can position it where I want to. And I've got my background here and even my background, I'll select that clip, is a little larger than it needs to be. So I'm going to set that about 70% too. And those are my three layers for the beginning of my um, composition or the beginning of my animation. Now remember the principle of parallax is objects that are closer to you move by more quickly. Now we're going to apply some keyframing animation then to each of these three layers individually and in doing that we're going to create that illusion that things that are closer to you are moving by more quickly. So I'm going to select first my foreground and I'll open up my keyframing workspace here, make sure that my CTI, my playhead, is at the beginning, and then I'll turn on the animation for it, which creates initial keyframes uh, for the position of this foreground. Move the playhead here to the end of the clip, and I'm going to resize it to say 100%. I'm also going to move it down into the left. So you can see the animation we've created. We're moving from here to over the rooftops. That's our foreground. Now we can do the animation for our center layer, our middle village PSD, so I'll select that. Once again, open up the keyframe control panel, move the playhead to the beginning. I'll set my initial keyframes by turning on toggle animation, and we go into detail in the book to explain how and why we do each of these things, by the way. Move the playhead to the end of the timeline, and here I'm going to set going up rather than going all the way up to 100%, I'm going to set it to go only to about 90%. And once again, I'm going to drag this down so that it also goes down into the left. So now we've got this animation here where we've got two elements, the foreground element going by very quickly and the middle ground element not quite as fast. In fact, that may be an awful lot of movement here for the middle layer. So I'm going to go back, select the middle layer. I'm going to jump to the final keyframe by selecting Go To Next Keyframe. And I'm going to set it to more like 80%. And maybe not move it quite so far. So now we've got something a little more realistic. Now I'm going to close this panel so we get a good view of what our animation looks like. I'll render it by pressing the Enter key and let's watch the animation. A very cool 3D effect. Now if you want to know more about how to create this effect, why we did what we did, greater detail, we take you step by step in the book through this and 49 other special effects. It's a great supplement to our moviepix.com guides to Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements. If you want to know more about the program, we got lots of tutorials on our website moviepix.com. Otherwise, please pick up the book. The cool tricks and hot tips for Adobe Premiere Elements 14 available at Amazon.com and of course right here at the MoviePix store. I'm Steve Grizzetti. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again real soon.